acute pancreatitis first of all etiology of acute pancreatitis what is the most common cause of acute pancreatitis it is gallstones what is the second most common cause second most common cause is alcohol what are the other causes of acute pancreatitis it is ercp blunt trauma hyper triglyceridemia hyper parathyroidism hyper calcemia carcinoma pancreas cystic fibrosis some viral infections and the mnemonic is cme c coxeki cytomegaly virus m mumps e eco virus and certain drugs these are the causes of acute pancreatitis now one principle is very simple in acute pancreatitis what anything which can lead to obstruction of pancreatic duct can cause acute pancreatitis anything because of which there is any direct or indirect compression of pancreatic duct leading to obstruction there is acute pancreatitis that's why you can see gallstones cause of acute pancreatitis in alcohol also there is pancreatic duct obstruction because of some secretions in cystic fibrosis in carcinoma pancreas there is ductal obstruction in hypercalcemia patients of hyperparathyroidism there is formation of stones and those stones are causing what acute pancreatitis there are certain drugs which leads to increased risk of acute pancreatitis there are two list of drugs one which are having definite association or definite causes and second group is probable cause of acute pancreatitis so see the drugs which are definite cause of acute pancreatitis those drugs are six mercaptopurine second azathioprine third deoxy inosin fourth sitarabin fifth amino salicylic acid sixth tetracycline seventh pentamidine eighth estrogen ninth trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole tenth thiazide eleventh valproate twelfth furosemide and thirteen metronidazole so these are definite causes now how to remember this there is a simple mnemonic by which you can easily remember see this is mad this is cat this is 
pet. This is TV and this is FM. So the mnemonic is Mad cat pet. Mad cat is your pet. She likes TV and FM. So these are definite causes of acute pancreatitis. This list is very important. It is frequently asked in many exams. After that, certain drugs which are probable causes and those drugs are also asked frequently. What are those drugs which are probable causes and frequently asked? First, Fenformin. Second, Procanamide. Isoniazid. L. asparaginase, Acetaminophen, Aminophen, Alpha Methyl Dopa. And seventh, Sulindac. How to remember these? The mnemonic is PILAS. P I L A A S. PILAS. So, fenformin, proganamide, isoniazid, L asparaginase, acetaminophen, alpha methyl dopa, and Sulindac. These are the drugs having. Probable association or these are the probable causes of acute pancreatitis. There are various prognostic factors or markers which are asked in acute pancreatitis, which tells you whether patient is having mild to moderate acute pancreatitis or severe pancreatitis. So, what are those various prognostic indicators? First, our scoring system. First, Ransom score. Second, modified Glasgow. Score. Third, Bishop score. In all these three, if the score is more than equal to three, patient is having severe acute pancreatitis. Fourth, Apache 2. If the score is more than equal to 8, patient is having severe acute pancreatitis. After that, C reactive protein more than 130 mg per deciliter. Sixth, CT severity index. This CT severity index is combination of Balthazar CT grading plus necrosis score. So these are various prognostic markers or indicators used for acute pancreatitis to know whether patient is having mild to moderate acute pancreatitis or patient is having severe pancreatitis. These are frequently asked in exam, especially Ransons, Bishop and Apache 2. We are going to discuss in detail. Ranson score for acute pancreatitis. For alcoholic pancreatitis. There are two scores. One for gallstone and one for alcoholic. In exam, alcoholic one is frequently asked. We are going to discuss in detail. There are two set of parameters. One, assist at the time of admission. And second, assist after 48 hours. 
What are the parameters which are assessed at the time of admission? First, age more than 55 years. Second, WBC count more than 16,000 per microliter. Third, RBS more than 200 milligram per deciliter. Fourth, AST. Fourth, LDH more than 350 international units per liter. And fifth, AST more than 250 units per liter. These are the five parameters assessed at the time of admission. What are the parameters which are assessed after 48 hours? First, fall in hematocrit. More than 10 points. Second, blood urea nitrogen elevation. More than 5 milligram per deciliter. Third, serum calcium less than 8 milligram per deciliter. Fourth, base deficit more than 4 milli equivalent per liter. Fifth, PO2 less than 60 mmHg and sixth fluid sequestration more than 6 liters so these are total 11 parameters out of total 11 if more than equal to 3 are present it is suggestive of severe acute pancreatitis what is the biggest problem for this ransom score Minimum 48 hours are required for complete evaluation of score. That's why it cannot be assessed at the time of admission. So you need the scores which can be assessed at the time of admission completely. Like Bishop and Apache 2. These are very, very important and frequently asked nowadays. So what is Bishop score? So what's the full form of Bishop score? Bishop score. This is bedside index for severity of acute pancreatitis. Bedside index for severity of acute pancreatitis and the parameters are also Bishop. B. Blood urea nitrogen. How much? More than 25 mg per deciliter. I. Impaired mental status. S. SIRS. Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. There are four parameters in which more than equal to two of four are present. A age more than 60 years and p plural effusion so these are five parameters of bishop score out of these five if zero to two are present the mortality is two percent and if three to five parameters are present mortality is more than 15 percent that's why if the score is more than equal to 3, it is suggestive of severe acute pancreatitis. After that, there is another very important score is Apache 2. Full form, acute physiology. And Chronic Health Evaluation Two 
acute physiology and chronic health evaluation too. So there are 12 parameters. How to remember those parameters? There is the mnemonic. What? Blood transfusion increases heart rate at Commonwealth Games shop number 2. So blood transfusion increases heart rate at Commonwealth Games shop number 2. Let me tell you, out of these 12 parameters, most of the parameters are vitals or laboratory investigations. So what are those vitals which starts with B, T, H and R? Simple. B is blood pressure. T is temperature. H is heart rate or respiratory rate. Blood pressure, temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate. After that, C, serum creatinine, W, WBC count, G, Glasgow Coma Scale, GCS, S, Sodium, H, Hematocrit, O, Oxygenation, P, pH and this P, potassium. So these are 12 parameters. In exam, we have some difficulty in remembering which of the following? You have difficulty in remembering what? This G. You will encircle this G and H and O. So Glasgow Coma Scale, you have some difficulty in remembering? Hematocrit and oxygenation. Rest you are going to remember it easily. Out of 12, if more than equal to 8 are present, patient is having severe acute pancreatitis. Now going to start the neuroendocrine tumors of pancreas, which is very, very important. So have a look. Neuroendocrine tumors of pancreas. First question, what's the most common neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas? The most common neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas is non-functional second question most common functional neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas is insulinoma and third question most common functional and malignant neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas is gastrinoma so be careful most of the insulinomas are benign that's why most common functional neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas insulinoma but most common functional and malignant neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas is gastrinoma now there is a basic difference between adenocarcinoma and neuroendocrine tumor. We just discussed carcinoma pancreas which is adenocarcinoma. What's that basic difference? Adenocarcinomas are symptomatic because of mass effect. So when tumor becomes big then only patients are symptomatic. But these neuroendocrine tumors arise from neuroendocrine cells and those neuroendocrine cells produces active substance and because of production of active substance these neuroendocrine tumors are symptomatic example like insulinoma it arises from beta islet cells so if it is arising from islet cells beta islet cells it is going to produce what insulin so patient is symptomatic not because of mass because of production of insulin because after production of insulin, patient is having signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. So one thing, neuroendocrine tumors are symptomatic because of production of active substance. That's why they are symptomatic at a very early stage. That's why diagnosed at early stage and treated at early stage. That's why neuroendocrine tumors are having much better prognosis than adenocarcinoma. Second, since they are symptomatic because of production of active substance, 
diagnosis is usually made in laboratory by measuring those active substances like in insulinoma we are going to measure insulin glucagonoma we are going to measure glucagon gastrinoma we are going to measure basal acid output second very important point since the diagnosis is made in laboratory you need another investigation for localization of tumor and what is the good thing about neuroendocrine tumors most of neuroendocrine tumors except insulinoma express somatostatin receptors and that's why investigation of choice for localization of neuroendocrine tumors except insulinoma is what srs srs means somatostatin receptor scintigraphy so investigation of choice for localization of most of neuroendocrine tumors except insulinoma is somatostatin receptor scintigraphy so these are the differences between adenocarcinoma and neuroendocrine tumors one by one we will discuss first insulinoma insulinoma is the most common functional neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas it is usually benign and the most common site be careful it is equally distributed in head body and tail and you must be knowing that it is characterized by one triad what's the name of that triad whipple's triad it is characterized by a triad known as whipple's triad that is symptoms of hypoglycemia plus blood glucose level forty to fifty milligram per deciliter plus improvement in symptoms after taking oral glucose. improvement in symptoms after taking oral glucose so this is whipple's triad now what is the basic problem in insulinoma there is increased release of insulin and because of that patient is having hypoglycemia so there will be manifestations of hypoglycemia now see this is a painless condition and whenever patient is having hypoglycemia patient is going to know that whenever patient is having signs and symptoms of this condition patient is going to eat something so most of the times patient is bothered about eating that's why this tumor is associated with weight gain or weight loss be careful it is associated with weight gain so clinical features it's a painless condition associated with weight gain and there are two kinds of manifestations first because of sympathetic overactivity because of sympathetic overactivity there is tachycardia palpitation tremors excessive sweating After that, there are neuroglycopenic symptoms. Dizziness. Headache. 
fatigue. In severe cases, it can lead to hypoglycemic coma also. So these are the manifestations. Gold standard investigation for diagnosis is 72 hours fasting. In this case, patient is allowed to fast in a controlled setup in laboratory and every half an hour patient blood sample is being taken for assessment of level of insulin and the glucose. Whenever ratio of insulin to the glucose is more than 0.4, it is diagnostic. Stop the test. So we usually stop the test when insulin to glucose ratio is more than 0.4. After that, investigation for localization. Best preoperative test. Best preoperative test for localization. Is intra arterial. Calcium injection. plus portal venous blood sampling intra arterial calcium injection plus portal venous blood sampling but be careful this is best pre operative test for localization overall best for localization of insulinoma is endoscopic ultrasound plus intraoperative palpation overall best investigation for localization of insulinoma endoscopic ultrasound plus intraoperative manual palpation so insulinoma is localized okay after that treatment what is the basic problem of this patient? Patient is having hypoglycemia because of increased release of insulin. We have to switch off the release of insulin or decrease the release of insulin. Which substance can decrease the release of insulin? One is octreotide and second is disoxide. Disoxide is directly toxic to islet cells and octreotide decreases the insulin secretion. So see, in treatment for Preoperative preparation for preoperative preparation, we give disoxide and octreotide to control hypoglycemia of the patient. After that, I'm going to tell you a simple logic. Have a look. Suppose this is pancreas. There is any tumor in the body and tail. Any tumor. What's the treatment? Treatment is distal pancreatectomy. Simple. And if there is any malignant tumor in the head, treatment is pylorus preserving pancreaticodiodinectomy or Longmire Traverso procedure. I am repeating. If malignant tumor is there in the head, the treatment is pylorus preserving pancreaticodiodinectomy or Longmire Traverso procedure. And if a benign tumor is there in the head, for benign tumor, the treatment of choice is what? Enucleation. So for benign tumor in the head, treatment of choice enucleation. Now, simple question Insulinoma located in body and tail what's the treatment of choice distal pancreatectomy and insulinoma located in head of pancreas what's the treatment of choice enucleation why because it is benign so this is how we treat insulinoma next gastrinoma the other name of gastrinoma is Zollinger Ellison syndrome.
Now see the basic pathophysiology in gastrinoma. In gastrinoma, there is increased release of gastrin. Because of this, there is increased release of acid. And because of this, patient is having increased risk of peptic ulcer disease. This is the simple etiopathogenesis. Now see, this gastrinoma is the most common functional malignant neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas. Most common site of gastrinoma is duodenum followed by pancreas. Question is asked, in duodenum, which part? So, in duodenum, the most common site is first part, followed by second part, followed by third part, not seen in fourth part. Now, you know that it is also associated with men Multiple endocrine neoplasia, which one? Men 1. So, gastrinoma is associated with men 1 in how many cases? In 25% cases. In 75% cases, it is sporadic. After that, there are questions related to duodenal gastrinoma and pancreatic gastrinoma. What's the difference? Have a look. The differences between duodenal gastrinoma and Pancreatic gastrinoma. Duodenal gastrinoma most commonly metastasizes to lymph node, whereas this pancreatic gastrinoma most commonly metastasizes to liver. What is the most common cause of death in Zollinger Ellison syndrome or gastrinoma? It's the liver metastasis. That's why, obviously, which one is having worse prognosis? Pancreatic gastrinoma is having worse prognosis because most common cause of death in gastrinoma is what? Liver metastasis. You must be knowing that more than 90% of gastrinoma are located in a triangle. And what is the name of this triangle? That's known as triangle of Passero also known as gastrinoma triangle. So, triangle of Passero or gastrinoma triangle. Questions are asked, what are the boundaries of triangle of Passero? Have a look. So, you can see, what are the boundaries? The boundaries are, can you see? Cystic duct CBD junction, body and neck of pancreas, and second and third part of duodenum. This is the boundary. So the boundaries are cystic duct, CBD junction, body and neck of pancreas. and second and third part of duodenum. Second and third part of duodenum. So, 90% of gastrinomas are located in triangle of Passero or gastrinoma triangle. Now, simple question. Since there is increased acid output, there is increased risk of peptic ulcer. So, patient will be having signs and symptoms of ulcer. So, what are those symptoms? Most common symptom of gastrinoma is what? Abdominal pain. Because of ulcer or increased acid output, other symptoms are retrosternal heartburn, reflux, symptoms of reflux, dyspepsia and diarrhea. 
Now see why there is diarrhea in Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Since there is increased production of acid, this acid also enters duodenum. You must be knowing that pancreatic enzymes work at alkaline pH. When the acid enters into duodenum, it causes inactivation of pancreatic enzymes. Because of that, there is no digestion. And if there is no digestion, there is no absorption and if there is no absorption, there is malabsorption. Simultaneously, this acid irritates the proximal part of jejunum also leading to secretion. And because of this, patient is having diarrhea. Characteristically, if we are going to insert Ryle's tube or nasogastric aspiration of this gastric acid characteristically relieves diarrhea. So, Nasogastric aspiration in this case characteristically relieves diarrhea. How we are going to make the diagnosis of this condition? We are going to measure basal acid output. And this basal acid output is more than 15 milli equivalent per hour. This value is diagnostic. And suppose basal acid output is less than 15 milliequivalent per hour and if we are going to suspect this particular tumor we have to go for best provocative test and what is best provocative test for the diagnosis is secretin stimulation test so best provocative test is secretin Stimulation test. On secretin stimulation, release of gastrin more than 200 picogram per ml is diagnostic. I am repeating. On secretin stimulation test, release of gastrin more than 200 picogram per ml is diagnostic. So you have to remember two values basal acid output more than 15 milli equivalent per hour or on secretin stimulation test release of gastrin more than 200 picogram per ml is diagnostic since diagnosis is done investigation of choice for localization is SRS that is somatostatin receptor scintigraphy so investigation of choice for localization is somatostatin Receptor scintigraphy. Now coming to the treatment. One question is asked in medicine. What is the drug of choice in gastrinoma? And obviously it is proton pump inhibitors, PPI. Because it will decrease the acid output. But by the way, what's the treatment of choice? Since it's a malignant tumor, the treatment of choice is pylorus. Preserving pancreatico duodenectomy pylorus preserving pancreatico duodenectomy this is the treatment of choice